Hello, so this is a guide for the nation of Burgundy. Please bear in mind that this strategy is extremely risky, like many of my other campaigns. But hey, if it works, it works. So let's get into it. Right, so first thing I'd recommend doing is setting your rivals to England, France, and somebody else, just not Austria or Aragon. I'm also going to Royal Marry Castile, Aragon, and in a minute I'm going to Royal Marry the Austrians. What you now want to do is go to your estates and give a religious state, religious diplomats, primacy and nobility, land of commerce, and private trade fleets. I now recommend dropping the liberty desire of your subjects by using enable support loyalists and dynastically marrying nevers. Then remove the support loyalists because it costs money and there's, there's a genuinely no point. Also remember to seize land. Choose whichever agenda best suits you. You should now be able to rule my Austria. Right, what I recommend doing next is to focus mill power because at the start it's worth having the best mill power you can get even if you are behind on admin and dip a little bit. I'd also, in order to fix your economy, I'd also recommend destroying the castle at Oxeroy and destroying the fort at Picardy as well. And then mothballing the other forts, giving you a steady income of two ducats at the start. The best course of action would be to diplomatically insult both France and England in order to get you the mission English Alliance. Get you improved relations 25%. I'd then send your trader I'd then set your trader in Bordeaux to establish communities to improve relations with France's vassals, which is something that you will need for this mission, League of the Public Wheel. I'm going to set my army to drill for a bit because I'm going to wait for it to get to at least 20% professionalism before I declare war. Seize land from Nevers and then release Champagne as a vassal. Champagne is good because it has cores on all of these areas in France and part of Orléans. What you can now do is give the privileged strong duchies to your nobility, which gives you plus two Diplo relations. And now ally Aragon, ally Castile, and ally the Austrians. What I'd now recommend doing is currying favours with both Austria and Aragon. Scratch that, Austria and Castile. So that Castile will come into a war against the French. As you can see, the Hundred Years War has fired and we are doing nothing. Don't worry, this is all part of the strategy. It would be nice if you could attack France whilst it's at war with England, but if not, don't worry, because you don't want to be attacking France without the help of your allies, otherwise you're done. Okay, the Neapolitan succession has triggered. As many of you may know, we do love the no CBO Naples. Which we will do after our war with France. Not going to spoil too much though. I'd also recommend building up your army. I do prefer this to using mercenaries because mercenaries have low morale and they can't be drilled. And here we go, Charles de Bourgogne he is now on the throne. As you can see, we now have 10 favours with Castile, which is brilliant. We can now improve relations with Austria. And then following this, we'll get our spy network work on France, which will help with us sieging down their forts. We can now get Miltech 4, something that neither France, nor Aragon, nor even the Ottomans have at this stage. Something you do love to see. We now have 10 favours with the Habsburgs. Let's go. Right then, it's time to build a spy network on the French. To stop drilling our armies, which are now almost at 50% army drill. You'd love to see it. It's now time to declare war on the French for the reconquest of Nemours or Troyes. Troyes would probably be the better option here, actually. Call in Austria and Aragon. We're so lucky Provence can't join. This is going to be an easy war. Do remember, if your treasury gets too low, be sure to take these burger loans. They're 1% interest. I think normal loans are either 3 or 5% interest, so make sure you go for those. 
And I'd also recommend setting your vassals to either supportive or siege. I'm going to set them to supportive right now because I see a, a French army. Oh, another thing. Try to get to Montpellier as soon as you can. You don't want Aragon to... Um, you don't allow Aragon to occupy it since that is the port we need to get into the Mediterranean. I'd now recommend setting your vassals to siege if you haven't done so already. And also set one of your vassals to ensure Troye is occupied. <gasps> and the Austrians just got stuck by it. So dear. Yeah, so just keep switching between siege and supporting, depending on how close the French armies are to you. We won the siege of Paris. Brilliant. <laughs> And stack wipe. Time to take the bug loans. Let's go. This is the best event in the game. Changed my mind. 5% army professionalism. And you only lose 30 ducats in this case. You love to see it, honestly. You do love to see it. If we need more manpower, we can always slack in recruitment. Although, I wouldn't recommend it unless, well, you're down bad. And you see, the good thing about this strategy as well, the favour strategy, is you don't have to give Aragon any provinces that border the Mediterranean, since they, you pull them in for favours. You can now also summon Diet again. Pick an agenda. I'm going for this, because I was going to do it anyway. It's important to build these trade centres. They're very important. Go for a peace treaty that looks like this, and don't take Paris, we'll, we'll wait for that in the next war, these are far more important. Give these four to Champagne, take these for yourself. How much could we get? We'll wait for this siege at Narbonne to finish, so we can get enough ducats to repay our debts. Right then, 99% war score. There we go, max ducats. See, these two are going to be very, very useful in the time to come. I'd now recommend getting ready to annex Champagne. So if their opinion is not 200 of you just yet, make sure it gets there soon. Again, just repay your loans, drop the port maintenance, and uh, wait for the economy to level out. It might take a little bit, but the economy should level out. I'd also recommend deleting the fort at Narbonne and dropping your army maintenance to as low as possible. You can now seize land from your estates without them becoming disloyal. We can now upgrade our military technology to level 5. This is going to help in the long run a lot. I would now recommend drilling your army uh, and dropping your fort maintenance. Fleet maintenance, I mean. Yeah, your economy will be pretty shaky but you do need that professionalism in the times to come. Right, so our next step is going to be to no CB attack, Naples. Why do they have a truce with France? You see, now usually I would go for national manpower modifier, but in this campaign, we need money more than anything else, since... Well, we don't gain manpower that slow. Just wait for our lands to pour up. Decrease autonomy wherever we can to get some more ducats. There we go. Another thing, make sure you keep your prestige and stability as high as you can. And also, um, something I learned in the Armenia game is make sure your corruption stays below at least 5. So if you can, once your economy gets larger, take a couple of years out. It increased the rooting out of corruption, spy network construction, national unrest. If it gets much higher than that, your national unrest will be a lot higher and you'll get a lot of rebellions. Make sure you're improving relations with uh, France's vassals. You want to uh, you want to get them to have at least a hundred opinion of you for that mission. Right, so right as you can see, it's almost 1463 and I'm just going to drill my armies. Wait for my ducats to increase to around 50. Wait for my manpower level to increase maybe around 8,000 or so. Then we'll call in Austria 
and we'll fight Naples and we've got that brilliant event again oh also for the Naples war more taxes may be a good idea we can now get Miltech 6 a fair amount of our lands are now mostly under our control local autonomy has been decreased to 26% and below which is brilliant so we're getting the most for our money now We've got a fairly stable economy of 4.21 ducats. Our army tradition is brilliant. That's 3.3. It might be worth recruiting a general at this stage. Oh my god. Look at that general. Jeez. That's a brilliant general. <laughs> we do need to get to Neop Neopolis quickly though. Because if Aragon see this weakness, they will declare war. But we can call in Aragon after we've taken the office to present them to prevent them from declaring their own war. That may be the play for this. I am kind of making this up as I go along. Don't hate me for that. I am going to have to ask this lot for military access. We'll send all of our troops to Rome. The quicker we peace out Florence, the quicker we peace out Naples. However, we don't want anybody else taking Neapolis from us. Because Neapolis is basically the key to getting Naples. It holds... How much war score is it worth? I think it's worth like... 34%. Let's go! We lose some war exhaustion. You do love to see that. Oh dear. We won the siege of Neapolis. You love to see it. Oh god, oh god, the army's gone. Let's go, vassals! You'd love to see it. Brilliant. We can now piece them out for this amount of ducats. We could pillage their capital for nine aggressive expansion. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. And we can get them to transfer, well, we can get them to pay war reparations. The army of Naples is now, it's, it's going to get stacked by it, I think. Yep. It's getting a stack on it. Right then. There we go. This is the peace deal against Naples. A coalition is most likely going to form and you will probably have to fight them, if I'm being honest with you. But if you've got the strong allies like Castile, Aragon and Austria, they may not declare. And even if they do, you can either beat them back or if necessary, if truly necessary, you can get your allies to release nations. Either way, you're not giving up anything yourself. Yes, this is what we needed. Negative 10% AE. Yep, as you can see, we are definitely far behind in Diplo technology and admin technology. But after the Burgundian inheritance, it shouldn't be an issue, so don't worry about it. We can now trade more soldiers with Aragon, and we can also take ducats from one of our other allies. Right, by the way, our next war is, uh, it's also going to be a no CV war, and it's going to be against, of all people, Tunis. For some reason, Granada still hasn't been attacked, which is kind of interesting. I've seen this in a couple of other Burgundy games as well. Granada not being attacked. Our economy is again stable, and it's time to build some ships. Our truce with the French has now ended. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Do you think it is a good idea to attack France again? Because when the Burgundian inheritance succession occurs, if we take all of this French land, if we take most of this French land and we leave them as a very tiny, tiny nation, we can just take the stability here and just attack them. Oh dear. Okay, it started happening. No, never mind. We're not going to attack anybody. Nope. Though expansion in North Africa shouldn't count too much towards Europe. I'm now going to shift. Um, from Miltech to Admin Tech because I do need my Admin Technology now we've now got the League of the Public Wheel somehow I wasn't even trying to get it but we now have it so we're just going to state Campania where Neapolis is yeah we will we'll, we'll create the other Now, finally, we have cannons. Wow! 
Now, for your third government reform, I'd recommend going for centralised bureaucracy, because, I mean, the other one is just, it's terrible. We need at least one regiment that can siege quickly. Ooh, why won't Castile come in? No trade favours for trust. The nations, if they won't join, just tra trade favours for trust. That could be with Castile. And Aragon will now join us. Pay attention to this. So, in North Africa, there are three very important provinces. It's these three. Carthage, which I think in normal game is called Tunis. Then you've got this province, which produces sugar, and this one that produces sugar. These three are the main ones you want to get. I take this one because the borders look nice. And this one is also quite useful. Since you can release the nation of Prepolitania from there. Right, time to attack Tunis. Establish as much as we can. We're about to beat the Tunisian fleet. Oh, Crusade. Okay. We want the siege of Carthage. Let's go. And there we go, we want another siege. What we'd also want is this point at Septum. Tingus, I mean. Portugal is Septum. Ah, this one, this one's not the most of it. There we go. Attack the army at Tunis, there we go. It is probably worth mothballing some of your, well, all of your forts. It's not, it's not worth keeping them. No way the Tunisian would make their way into your land. An extremely, extremely important city to take, if you can, would be Tingis, or whatever it's called in the normal game. By the way, the, the, the province one I'm using, I created myself. Um, it'll be in the description if you want to use it though. It's Latin provinces. Yep, here we go. Maria of Burgundy. That is a good amount of ducats and I'll take it. Okay, it does affect the Italian nations. Alright, never mind then. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll still stick to that then. Here we go. This helps. Oh dear, we're slightly over governing capacity. Well, what we could do about that governing capacity is we could usually expand administration twice. I wouldn't recommend releasing Tripoli instantly since we'll already be struggling with, with, with Diplo. Okay, since Castile's doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to peace out early for the provinces that we want in Naples. Naples has 7,000 manpower. 8,000. Okay, we're just going to attack that. So let's keep going. We'll take this one. What types does this cost? It cost a zero. Come on. We are going to peace out soon. <laughs> we'll let them pee you that bit. But I'm gonna take the rest of Naples. Yeah, alright, calm. We'll peace out for that. By the way, in normal games, Burgundian inheritance usually occurs faster than this. So just remember that you may not get the opportunity. And here we go. The Burgundian succession, what we've been waiting for literally the entire game. We're going to fall under a PU. See, the thing is, is that if we declare war on France, we could have... If France was tiny, we could have gone under a PU with them. Just broken out free, easy. In general, you should make France smaller, so that you can do a reintegrate with the French. Since I didn't do that, I'm staying Burgundian. Oh dear, France has declared war All our allies come in. Oh, France is dead. France is dead. France is gone. Oh my god. Yeah, they're gone. Wait a minute, is Hungary... Hungary's under a personal union with Austria. Okay, so... These are our allies. This is who declares on Earth. Yes, we'll grant the great privilege. I mean, otherwise we'll lose Flanders to Hesse. So, we'll grant the great privilege, and there we go, we inherited those thrones. In general, we'll take Corsica, and we'll also get them to steer trade to us. Now, you know what, what, what we're going to do, is we don't need so many ducats, is... Okay, no, never mind, never mind, it's going to humiliate them, but... We've secured the succession. And we'll take this one. Gain one stability. Marie the First will restore stability to Burgundy. And we will join 
the Holy Roman Empire. Right then now, so this is the end of the guide. For all future expansion opportunities, you have two footholds in North Africa. So expand there and in France proper first, after the coalition has cooled down. After that, expand into Savoy and other parts of Northern Italy. After that, it's completely up to you. If you see an expansion opportunity, take it. For ideas, I recommend admin ideas for core creation cost and diplo for diplomats and province war score reduction to allow you to take a lot of land fast, like I do in my other campaigns. For your economy, I recommend stating the area around Carthage after the area is called. Make sure that you state it and the, and the autonomy is brought down to 20% or lower. After that, your economy should produce around 7 or so ducats. And also make sure to invest in other, other production buildings. Make sure you play it all a bit in order to maximize your income. Don't hesitate to trade ducats for favors or manpower for favors with your allies. That's uh, an excellent mechanic. And yeah, if you have any other ideas for guides, uh, leave them in the comments. Or any other video ideas in general, just leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. And peace out.